Okay, we have here another integral from the MIT integration B 2024, regular season number 12. We have the integral from one to three of this infinitely repeating expression dx. Okay, so you may notice this is really similar to a problem I did in the qualifying round for MIT 2024. The only real difference is that they have the reciprocal everywhere. I think they had everything flipped with x in the numerator. And it turns out that just the small difference makes it a little bit of a harder problem. So to get started with this, I want to use the same method I did last time. With the infinite repeating expression, we usually want to do this, is we want to do something to kind of simplify this or turn this into something we can work with. And what I like to do is just call the whole thing y. And what we can notice with ny, we get the same thing repeating, like this right here. Well, this is going to be the same thing as what we have here, but this is also the same thing as just the whole y. So what we can do with this is create a new equation where we're going to want to solve for y to transform this. So I can write the numerator will just become 1 plus y, and the denominator will become x plus y. And I can just kind of cross multiply it. We can kind of create a 1 there to do this. So let's come over here. So I can multiply this out. We'll have, on the left side, I'll have y times x plus y squared. And then, then over here on the right, we'll have 1 plus y. Let's get everything on one side and let's try to set this up like a quadratic. So I'm going to rearrange the order here. I'll bring the y squared in front plus xy, and then we'll have this minus y here. Bring in this over minus 1, we'll have this all equal to 0. But again, I want to set this up like a quadratic. So in here, what I can do is factor out a y, and I can write this as x minus y, sorry, x minus 1 times y minus 1 equal to 0. And now in order to solve for y, what I can do is use the quadratic formula where like this is going to be our b value right here. This is going to be our c. And our a coefficient over here will just be 1. Okay, so coming over here, we'll put together our quadratic formula. So first we're going to have minus b. So I'm going to write that. Let's write that as 1 minus x over here plus or minus square root b squared. We're going to have x minus 1 squared minus 4. a is just 1 and then our c is going to be minus 1. And then this is all over 2a, which is just going to be 2. Now minus times minus here is going to give me a plus. And then what I want to do here is I want to deal with this plus or minus. We want just one value for this. We're not going to really want that plus or minus right there. Now just coming back to our expression. First of all, notice our bounds are between 1 and 3. So our x value is always going to be positive. And so if x is always positive and we're just adding 1s, there's no way that we can ever get a negative number here. So our y value needs to be greater than or equal to 0. But then coming back over here, we're subtracting x, which is a positive number, and it's always greater than or equal to 1. What's in the radical? This is always going to be greater than 0. So basically, if we have a negative there, the whole thing's going to be negative, and that's not possible. So what I'm going to do is just change this to a plus. But now that we found our y value, we can just take this and we can plug it back into the integral. And what we can do is try to integrate this thing, which should be easier to deal with. Okay, so now with the rewrite, I took the y that we found on the other board, and I've actually split this up into two integrals. Now, clearly the first one's really easy, right? That's just going to be power rule. This one, we can actually do a trig substitution on it. What I can do is, let's just do the substitution. And because we're adding, this is a good case to substitute for tangent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call, we'll set x minus 1 equal to tan of t. But I also want to deal with this 4 here. So what I can do is create a 2 here, because when we square it, we're going to get back to 4. And then I'll go ahead and take a derivative. So we're going to have dx. This is going to become 2 secant squared t dt. And before I substitute, let's just integrate over here, because again, this is going to be easy. So integrating this, we're going to get x minus x squared over 2. And this is all going to be evaluated from 1 to 3. And then substituting over here, we've got 1 half in front. And then evaluating the balance, actually, let me solve for t. So what I'm going to do is we can write this as, if I divide by 2 on both sides, I'll have x minus 1 over 2. And this is going to be equal to tan of t. But then solving for t, we get t equals just arctan x minus 1 all over 2. So first, let's evaluate the upper bound 3. We plug it in here. We're going to get 2 over 2, or just 1. So the arctan of 1, that's going to happen at pi over 4. And then we plug a 1 in here. Well, now we get 0 in the numerator, so we're looking for arctan of 0. That's just going to be 0. And then coming over here, when we square 2 tan t, this is going to become 4 tan squared t plus 4. And for the dx value, it's just going to be this, but I didn't plan my space very well. Okay, I cleaned everything up, and we brought our dx value in right here. Now we just need to clean this up a little bit. So first, let's just cancel 2 with the 1 half here. Then this, I can actually factor this. I can factor out a 4, and then this becomes 4 tan squared t plus 1. But we have the trig identity for this, tan squared t plus 1. I can write this as secant squared t. So bringing everything together, let's put our bounds back. 
Now, first of all, we have four inside the square root. So I take a square root of four, and we have a two that I can bring out front. Again, this is gonna be the square root of secant squared t. So this is gonna actually be absolute value secant t times secant squared t dt. But just notice with our bounds, we're in the first quadrant, so secant's always gonna be positive. I can remove the absolute value. So then just multiplying this together, secant times secant squared, I can write this as secant cubed of t. And while we're at it, let's bring this one along too. So I'm just gonna evaluate, we'll bring in, first we'll evaluate here at three. So we'll have three minus three squared, this is gonna be nine over two. Then here for the next part, here we'll, break, we'll do a big bracket. And then when we evaluate at one, this becomes one minus one half. So let's just clean this all up. So what I can do is get a common denominator here. I can write this as six over two minus nine over two. This right here is just one half. So we're gonna have this minus one half. And we have the one half outside. So then this is gonna be one half. This is gonna be minus three halves minus one half. But then this right here is minus two minus two times one half. This whole thing boils down to just minus one. So now at this point, we're just ready to integrate this thing. And I'm gonna use a formula for this. Then we're gonna have our plus two out front here. Now the formula for this is gonna be one half secant times tangent plus we're gonna have one half natural log secant t plus tan t like that. But then when we distribute in this two, this is gonna cancel with this and this, and this will cancel out here. But we just need to evaluate this from zero to pi over four. So first, well, we're at minus one in front here. Secant at pi over four is gonna be just square root of two. Tangent at pi over four is just gonna be one. Then we'll have natural log. Again, we just got these values. So secant at pi over four is gonna be square root of two. And this is gonna become a plus one. Then evaluating at zero, secant at zero is gonna be one. Tangent at zero is gonna be zero, so that part's going away. Then we have plus natural log, again, secant's gonna be one plus tangent at zero, but natural log of one, again, that's zero. So this whole part right here is gone. And so now we can just put this together for our final solution. So I'm gonna just go out of order. We're gonna have natural log. I can drop the absolute value, clearly a positive number. So natural log square root of two plus one. Then we'll have, I'll do this plus square root of two minus one, and that's it. I don't really know what the time limit is on this, but if you had to do this in two minutes, I don't know, that's just a lot of, there's just a lot of computation there. Okay, there you have it. Good one from MIT 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.